Image Church, how are you guys? Are you guys ready to worship the Lord tonight? Awesome. I want to read this scripture right now. It's in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 11. Don't turn there, but just listen and prepare your hearts. It says, Then the priests left the holy place. All the priests who were present had purified themselves, whether or not they were on duty that day. And the Levites, who were musicians, were dressed in fine linen robes and stood at the east side of the altar playing cymbals, lyres, and harps. They were joined by 120 priests who were playing trumpets. The trumpeteers and singers performed together in unison to praise and give thanks to the Lord. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, they raised their voices and praised the Lord with these words. And this is what we say tonight. He is good. His faithful love endures forever. 
at that moment, a thick cloud filled the temple of the Lord. The priests could not continue their service because of the cloud, for the glorious presence of the Lord filled the temple of God. So Lord, we welcome you right now in this place. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will have your way tonight. Overwhelm us with your presence in Jesus' name. You are welcome, Holy Spirit. Have your way. Amen. Amen. So we give praise to the Lord. Oh, we give praise to the Lord. We give praise to the Lord. Oh, we give praise to the Lord. We give praise to the Lord. We give praise to the Lord. Oh. Come on, at the top of the night, can we just lift this flame? Let the room be filled with praise. 
willing to get undignified to give God praise tonight. David danced right out of his garments, right out of his dignity, didn't even care. I wonder if anybody in the room is willing to praise God on that level to where you're saying, I don't care what dignity I came in here with tonight. I'm willing to give it all tonight. So I've had this headache uh, all afternoon and I took something right before the service and the team was praying for me. I just feel like I want to give the enemy a headache tonight. I want to lift up a praise that is so high and so God exalting that all of hell gets nervous tonight because our King reigns above it all. Our King reigns above it all. Our King reigns.
Open the 
to the Lord.
and we are responding to your love. The oceans are rising, rising and falling at your word, and we are responding.
Give him your all. 
to the water. There is a vast supply. There is a vast supply. Just come. He's the river of life. Just come, just come. He makes all things new. Just come to him. Just come to him.
ancient of days is in the room. Jesus Christ himself is here. Just like John said a minute ago, just come to him. He's here. Bring him your fear. Bring him your sin. Bring him your doubt. Bring him bondage. The King of Glory is in the room. Isaiah 54 verse 5 says, Don't you know that your maker is your husband? The Lord of hosts is his name. Your Redeemer, the Ancient One of Israel. For He is God over the earth. In moments like this, you could have as much of God as you want. He has freely given Himself to you. And I could feel the love and the outstretched hand of God saying, come home, son. Come home, daughter. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened down with life. If you're in this room and you have burdens, you have weights, you have sins that so easily ensnared you, I would love for you just to come down. In a moment like this, in an atmosphere like this, everything changes. I promise you. It's one when people come out of darkness and into his marvelous light, you guys could come to an altar, to a place where you can meet Jesus. Secondly, if you're in this room, yeah, come down. If you're in this room, and I heard three things in my spirit, and only you know, if you have stepped into repetition, you have stepped into neglection, or you stepped in to self just discipline, trying to do it on your own. Come to the altar tonight. And all that is a result of leaving first love. Is no longer giving fully of yourself to him. The bridegroom is in the room this, tonight. He is here. And I don't know if you've ever seen a, a, a groom while the, the bride is coming down the aisle but the joy on his face. You see, Scripture says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Come and say yes, and I do to him tonight. A full surrender tonight. Because his I do and his yes to you is Jesus Christ and him crucified. He died a brutal death, man. For this moment right here, he was beaten, bruised, bloodied, disfigured, the perfect God, man. The one who was tempted at all points, yet without sin. The one who in a moment takes every fear, every worry, Jesus is in the room. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for every one of these precious sons and daughters that say yes to you tonight. Say I do to you tonight. Jesus, we thank you that you're here that we don't come to an altar, we don't join a religion, we don't just come to a church, we, we have come to you and you alone. Come on, keep coming. If the Holy Spirit is nudging you, say yes to that. It's by grace through faith we come to him. It's not in our own righteousness, it's in His. Because our righteousness is but filthy rags. 
And in one moment, he takes your past and every mistake you've ever made and imputes righteousness into you. And now you can stand before him pure, spotless, and blameless. Now together, collectively in the room, we're gonna say a prayer, but in this prayer, we're gonna look at Jesus and him alone. And every word that comes out of our mouth, we're gonna say it directly to him. And in this moment, we're gonna completely give of our lives to him. Everything, our past, our present, and our future. So everybody in this room and everybody at this altar, we're gonna say it together as a family. And we're gonna look at the Ancient of Days' eyes and we're gonna say every single word. So we say, Jesus, we give you our entire lives tonight, today, I deny myself, I pick up my cross, and I follow you. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me, that you rose on the third day. Jesus, I believe that you ascended to the right hand of the Father where you rule and reign. And I believe one day you're coming back for me. Jesus, I give you everything. I give you my past. I give you my present. I give you my future. I renounce the world. I renounce my sin. And I give it to you. You for me and me for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's thank Jesus for every soul, every life. Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, mighty King, for you are good. You are good. In your precious, beautiful name. Amen. Ah, oh, thank you, Lord. The Bible says that joy fills heaven when just one comes back to Jesus. What a joyful and an amazing moment this is. If I could just have you guys look at me briefly. In this moment, you said yes to him and gave him everything. It's, you denied yourself and now you're going to pick up your cross and follow him and, and doing so, these next five things, we love, we, we, it's the life of the believer. And number one is that you pray every single day. And what prayer is, is you getting alone with the one in whom you just met and have a conversation with him. And he's gonna love you in a place of isolation, of secrecy, a place of getting alone with you. He's gonna love you and you're gonna love him back. It's relationship, it's every single day. And number two is this right here. It's the word of God. It's Jesus Christ himself. This is a living, it's living bread. It's true food, scripture says, for this is life. Every single day, I will open this book up and read the word straight from Jesus. Number three is to get baptized in water. Water baptism, we do it here very often. It's a severing of the old life. The Bible says a, a seared conscious, a conscious that was maybe the, the sins of yesterday may still be here in the, any guilt or shame in a moment that is severed in the waters of baptism. In fact, you, are, you, you go into the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. We get to partake of his life fully in baptism. We come up with the mind of Christ and new life and a cutting away of the old man. And number four is to connect to a body of believers. That's what we are here. We're a church. We're a family at its core. It's an amazing place to lock arms with people and run this race that God has given us called life straight after him. It's a place where you can open up to one another, have people pray with you and agree with you. There's many times that I have reached out to many people in this room for prayer, for encouragement, whatever it may be, it's huge. Number five is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
It's Jesus Christ himself baptizing you and clothing you with himself. And we're gonna all pray together right now and believe that Jesus Christ in, by his name baptize you into himself. So if we could have everybody in the room, just stretch your hands. We're gonna agree together. Come on, I pray the tangible presence of God hits every single one of you in this room in Jesus' name. Jesus, I know it's not by might. It is not by power. It is by the Spirit of God. I pray, Holy Spirit, you say to ask and you shall give. So we ask you to come now in Jesus' name. Come in your beauty, come in your might, come in your power. I pray you clothe every one of them in this room in Jesus' name. Father, I pray fire falls on the sacrifice of their heart. Father, I pray for boldness in each, each and every one of them. Father, for you said the righteous are as bold as a lion. So Holy Spirit, I pray that reality into each and every one of them. I pray that your love be shed abroad in each and one of their hearts. Father, I pray they see you, they hear you, they know you. Father, I pray a fresh baptism, fresh baptism for us in the room as well. We need you, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We love you, mighty King. In your precious, precious, beautiful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. Let's, let's thank the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> You're so good. You're so good. Come on, let's greet them as they go back to their seats. Let's welcome you into the family of God. What a moment. Literally, at this altar, lives are completely changed. Like if we seen in the spirit what took place, man, it's everything. But we're going to continue to worship the Lord tonight. We're going to worship him with our tithe and with our offering. What a moment we have to give into the presence of Jesus. So why don't we welcome Mackenzie as she comes up here. room. Thank you, Jesus. As we were singing, we sang, I will give you all my worship. I will give you all my praise. And like Ryan said, we get to step into this next act of worship and give to the Lord in our finances. I'm going to read from Deuteronomy 14, verses 22 and 23 says, you shall truly tithe all the increase of your grain that the field produces year by year. And you shall eat before the Lord your God in the place where he chooses to make his name abide. The tithe of your grain and your new wine and your oil of the firstborn of your herds and your flocks, that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. When we tithe, when we give to the Lord, we learn to fear him always, to walk in his ways always. It says you shall eat before the Lord your God. It's in his presence that we are fed. In the place where he chooses to make his name abide. And right now the King of Kings is in this room. His name abides here. We are fed in this place in his presence. Freely he has given and we get to give back to him. For every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Everything that we have Every good thing, every perfect thing is already his anyway. And we get to give it back to him tonight in this place where his name abides. So Jesus, we thank you that you are here and you are in this place. 
that you rest here, that you dwell here, that your name abides, Jesus. That tonight freely you have given of yourself. That you have made lives new tonight, Jesus. You are so worthy of our worship, of our praise, of our tithe and of our offering, Lord. So freely we give back to you tonight, Jesus. Lord, I pray that you would bless the tithe, bless the offering, and you would bless these givers, Jesus. We love you, Jesus, in your precious, beautiful name. Amen. You guys can text give to the number on your screen. And for those of you watching online, there's a number on your screen as well. Um, and for those of you in the room, if you need an envelope, you guys can raise your hand and an usher will get you guys an envelope and we will be back soon. All of the glory, all of the glory is yours, it's yours, it's yours. All of the glory, all of the glory, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. All of the glory, all of the glory, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. All of the glory, all of the glory, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. All of the glory, all of the glory, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. All of the glory, all of the glory, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. All of the glory, all of the glory, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours.
How's everyone doing? Tonight has been so beautiful and so powerful and we just want to take some time and share and really celebrate what the Lord is doing in our evangelism teams and in our church and we want to join with it and celebrate it because we know what we celebrate, uh, more will come from that. Amen. So whatever we celebrate and whatever we say amen to with our heart and with our lives, we're saying, Lord, do it again. So if we can have our people come on up, they're going to share. Maddie, you can come up as well. And I want to encourage you guys really to lean in and to grab onto this. And I believe even in this room that there will be healings that will break out tonight. And just even, even for the amens, for when they share testimonies for your own family, I want you to grab onto that tonight. In Jesus' name, all right. Hannah, if you wanna come on up here and you wanna share with us. A few weeks ago during worship on a Thursday morning, my back got healed. Um, and that night I had a dream of me talking to a girl with a brace on, no idea what for, who it was. Um, the next day I went to Target just to run some errands. I saw this girl with a brace on, on her wrist. Um, she looked about 16, 17. Um, and I just felt the need to go up there and ask if I can pray for her and got to know a little bit of her story, how she hurt her wrist, it was a volleyball accident. Um, she took off her brace and it was like really swollen, black and blue. Um, so I prayed with her and um, she really wanted to know more about the gospel. So I preached the gospel to her. Um, she first accepted Jesus into her heart and then... <laughs> And then her wrist got completely healed. Hello, I'm Javiera. I'm a first year. So a few weeks ago during outreach in Jesus School, we do outreach every Thursday and um, a few weeks ago, I went with my friend, uh, Brendan. Um, we went to Winter Garden, and right there, we, we felt led to pray for a man that was kind of standing next to like a, like a little pond thing. And when we went over there, we realized he spoke no English, and all we could understand is that he was from Macedonia. Um, and our friend, my friend Brendan fell from the Lord that he had pain in his body, and so... We were like, okay, Lord, how do we like communicate with him? And we were like, well, we can use our phone <laughs> and do the Google Translate. So there's no excuses ever. There's always such a... Um, and while, while we grabbed the phone, Brendan was typing, do you have pain in your body? And then we would give it to him and he would type. And then he's like, actually, yeah. And then Brendan went on and prayed for his knee, and he got healed. <laughs> and we knew that he got healed because, well, we gave him the phone and he typed, yeah, I have no pain anymore. And then afterwards we were like, okay. So then I, I grabbed the phone and I, like, I wrote the gospel and I gave it to him and then he was reading and he was, and I was like, do you understand? And I was like trying to type, and then he's like, okay, yes, I'm gonna give my life to Jesus. And he did. <laughs> yeah. Um, so mine um, happened the other day. I was driving home from, from school, and I remember I was, I was sitting at a, a stoplight waiting uh, for it to turn green and I saw this this lady walking 
uh, with her son. Her son was about two, two and a half years old. And the lady was like, she was so far gone. Like she was just like a zombie. Like I could tell that she was really high and she was just, her head was slumped down. I didn't, I couldn't even tell if her eyes were even open, but she was walking so slow and with her son. And like my heart started breaking uh, for that little boy and like tears started filling my eyes. And I started driving and I got about two miles down the road and, and I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, I gotta go back. And so I went back and I turned the corner and I went and I saw the lady walking with her son. And so I got out of my car and I walked up to her and she was so, she was so stoned and so far gone that it literally, I was about from here to the pulpit before she finally realized I was standing there on the, on the sidewalk and she like jumped and she was like, what do you want? And I said, I was driving by and I saw you and, and I, my heart went out to you and I felt from the Lord to come and talk to you and to pray for you. And she was like, ah. and so I started to tell her my story on my testimony and she started to listen and she turned the music off of her phone that was in her pocket. And then I just started preaching the gospel to her and, in, and she just broke, her head dropped and like she started weeping. And by the end of the gospel, I looked at her and I said, do you wanna surrender your life to Jesus and give him your life? And she was like, yes. And so we prayed together. And by that point, she was completely sober. She wasn't stoned anymore. And <laughs> so after that, we, we could walk a little bit before I got to my car. And uh, I was like, you want a Bible? And she's like, yes. And so I went to my car and I got a Bible for her. And she literally, she like, pulled it out of my hands and hugged it. And she said, I will always cherish this. And she started to walk off and her little son next to her had a little dinosaur. And he was like, mommy, rawr. She's like, oh, that's so sweet, baby. And then he just hit the little two-year-old just turned around and looked at me. And I'll never forget that kid's little face. And it was like, you gave me my mommy back. And then I left just wrecked, but praise the Lord. He's so good. <laughs> And then also we have youth here at Jesus Image Church, and we have some incredible testimonies. The Lord is moving in such incredible and powerful ways in youth. We have Maddie here, who is a part of Jesus Image Youth. If we can give it up for Maddie, she has a testimony. Um, <laughs> so this past week, uh, I was at uh, the Wednesday, the youth group, and um, me and my sisters all go together every Wednesday. Um, so we all got there, you know, we're all playing, waiting to start, and we all started to worship, and I remember, like, uh, <sighs> um, So uh, when we were worshiping, I just got like a push from Jesus. He was just like telling me like get on your knees and just like praise Him. So I listened to that and I got on my knees. But the problem is I had shin splints in my legs on both legs from lacrosse. So whenever like I walk, I run anything like it hurts. But like I still did it because like I was doing it for Him, you know. So I got down and I'm struggling to stay down. And I just worshiped God and prayed for him to take it away and just asked. And in like a blink of an eye, it was gone. All the pain, all my legs was gone. And, and after like, I realized like, at first I was like, whoa. Like, this, something feels different. 
but like I kind of like moved my legs a little bit. I was like, oh my gosh, he healed me. And, like, and still right now I'm kind of in shock because that was like the first time I've ever felt, like felt him. And like, like now from then on, like now I truly know that he's real. He is the one and only God. Yeah, so clearly the Lord is doing a lot in the youth. You know, um, last week, this Wednesday, we actually had a Q&A planned. And uh, the Lord showed up in worship, clearly. And, you know, that's because these kids are hungry for him. You know, he, he comes with hunger. He's moved by hunger. And so what better yet, why, why would we go into Q&A and... and you know, instead of just yield to the spirit. And so even before worship started, one of our drummers, uh, he has this reoccurring uh, inflammation in his thumbs. And uh, someone prayed for his thumbs. And typically when he, when he plays, it, it gets flared up. And the pain left him. And as he was playing, the flare up never came back. And then, and then uh, at the end of service, man, these kids were just so hungry for the Lord. They were on their faces, just worshiping him. And there's this kid, his name's Enrico, and he had this uh, pain in his bicep from jiu-jitsu. And um, he asked for prayer, and uh, the Lord completely healed his pain. He was like touching, he's like, I don't... I'm pushing so much pressure on this and it's, there's no pain. And it's just the goodness of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can we just thank Jesus for what he did? I think you need to pray for the youth real quick. Is that okay? You can do it. I really believe in you, and I feel like God is going to visit our youth, and I feel like there's even people watching and pastors watching online that you're even saying, I want this to happen at my church, and God's going to do it in your church. Just ask him, and I believe a wave of his presence is going to fall on our youth in this country and in the world like never before. And I just really feel that you need to ask the Lord to do it, and God is going to use you. Dear Lord, we ask you to fill this room with your Holy Spirit, God. Fill every single person in this room, God. You are our Lord and Savior, and we cannot go a day without your love, God. Thank you for healing all of all of the people you've healed. The broken, the weary, you've healed them and saved them, God. You died on the cross for us and shed your blood, God. We thank you, God. Thank you for blessing our lives and filling us with joy. We love you, God. We love you, Jesus. You're worthy and only you are worthy, God. And in your gracious holy name, amen. There's, there's one more thing I feel like as a church we're supposed to pray into over, over you and those watching online, that God would give you a burden for souls 
like never before and that you would be encouraged as you hear all these testimonies how easy it is just to share the love of Jesus, to share your experience, share what God has done for you, share the Bible, the gospel. It's right there in the Word of God and lives will be changed. And Hannah, I want you just to pray over us that that there would be new boldness for this church and for others watching, that they will step out in faith and share the gospel and go after healings and believe God to just transform lives. Would you pray? Jesus, I pray that you just touch every heart in here that is longing for you, Lord. I pray that you'll give them more boldness to just step out, out of their comfort zone, Lord, that when we hear your voice, we listen to it because it's all for your glory. Lord, I pray that you just give us your strength to go out into the world and live in outreach because that's what we're supposed to do. Yes. That's who we are as Jesus people. Yes. Open up our ears to be able to hear your whispers, yes. to be able to know which person to go to, which person that you want us to touch, Lord. I pray that you will only let us do what you want us to do, that we won't force anything without you. that you're gonna build up an army that's gonna go out yes. and just share your glory. Yes. Yes. Share your love, Lord, and share the gospel because that is who you made us to be. Yes. I just pray for more boldness that anyone is scared that you just comfort yes. them, Lord, and just give them peace and clarity that it, it is okay to go out. receive that by faith. Can you give it up for these amazing students and, and youth? And if we can have the people come up to do community, you guys are amazing. Of you. We're going to take communion now as a church family before we dismiss tonight. So if I can have, I believe Alex and Emily come up. And um, there was a testimony, I don't think she's here tonight, but last week, you remember how the Lord started healing people and we've been hearing just testimonies come in. There was a girl that has had issues conceiving. Remember last week how we, we talked about infertility and um, she claimed that her husband and her and she had um, adhesions, adhesions, right, in her stomach and, and she just could not get pregnant and she claimed it and her husband and they looked at each other and said, that word is for us. And on Monday, I believe, they took a pregnancy test and they are pregnant. Thank you, Jesus. May we never get used to this. It's beautiful what God is doing. And we share these testimonies because I know there's people in the room right now that you guys have real needs and you're believing God to heal you. But there is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood and body of Jesus Christ. So whatever the issue is, if it's emotional, if it's physical healing, whatever it is, God can heal you from everything. Jesus is the name above every disease, above everything. Jesus is above all. So I want you to grab it by faith tonight and creative miracles. I'm believing that God will do amazing things all over the world. Those watching online, get your communion elements ready. This is for you as well. And as we partake communion, have faith. Have faith that Jesus will touch you and heal you in Jesus' name. Wow, it's been such a wonderful night already. And I feel like I've been on this holy pendulum of like the gentleness of the spirit and the victory of Christ. And I don't know what to do with myself. I just know it's an amazing journey. 
And um, as John was talking about giving the enemy a headache, I feel like when we were speaking about the greatness of the Lord, I was like, there it is. The enemy has a headache. And then listening to the gospel and the offering and the testimonies, I'm like, we slayed this giant. We threw a stone straight into his forehead. And now I feel like with communion, it's time to just cut off his head and show everybody that Jesus is our victory. He is the Christ. So take the faith that Jessica was talking about and apply it right now. You don't have to overthink your healing. Just say, Jesus, heal me. Heal me. You are the victorious one. You died on the cross. You went into Hades. You took the keys of death. You rose from the dead. And today you sit at the right hand of the Father. You have won all the victory. I dare us to believe as a church that it is actually finished. And he paid the complete price. His blood is sufficient. And the fullness of God dwells in Jesus Christ, our precious Lord and Savior. So take the bread, hold it really high. Tell heaven and hell that you will proclaim Jesus for the rest of your days. Break the bread because he was broken. He died on the cross for all of us in this room. May we never forget it. May we never forget it. Thank you for what you have done tonight, Lord. And thank you what you will do forevermore. Forevermore. Let's take the bread. When Jess was talking about faith, I felt that so strongly, just even what Pastor Tommy Reed was talking about this morning. I want to invite you all to just really step into faith right now. As we take this, this is not just mere wafer and juice, like this is holy. This is holy and we have to know what we're proclaiming when we take this every single week. When we take this, we're remembering what Jesus did on the cross how he set us free, how he washed us completely with his blood. And none of us have to walk out in bondage. None of us have to walk out sick. If we truly take this in faith, this is the moment where sickness has to leave because we're proclaiming and we're partaking of the blood of Jesus. There is nothing stronger on this earth than the blood of Jesus. So Lord, we just honor you right now. Can everyone just thank him for his blood? Thank you, Jesus, for your blood, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for, en for inviting us into this new covenant of your blood, Lord, where we can know freedom and where we can know wholeness in completely healed bodies, Lord. And as we take this in unison, Lord, we just declare complete healing in every single body, and all of those watching online that are believing for healing, we partner with you and we say yes and amen that in the name of Jesus and by his blood, you are healed. So let's just take this blood. Yeah, let's just just receive that right now lord we thank you for your healing power to flow in jesus name let every issue father big and small jesus be healed right now in the name of jesus and lord i just want to pray, pray a blessing over you before we dismiss i pray god you will awaken the childlike hunger in our hearts again jesus when I was worshiping tonight, I just felt like there was such a simplicity of worship that he's returning to the church right now. And I believe that he's gonna visit you guys and all of us in a fresh new way. And I think you need to ask him. I was asking him as I was worshiping tonight, Lord, visit me again. I don't wanna live off of yesterday's encounter. I need something new, Jesus. I need something fresh to sustain us, God. So Lord, right now we ask as a church, to visit us, Lord, in a fresh, new, tangible way, God, undeniable Jesus. I thank you, Father, for new revelation. I thank you, Jesus, that you will visit your church, God, in a mighty way. Great days are ahead, and we thank you for that. Just thank him for that. Great days are ahead, and we thank you, God, for all it is you're going to do. We say yes and amen. We say yes and amen. In Jesus' mighty name, bless your church. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, I love you guys. We're going to say good night. We'll see you next Sunday morning and Sunday night. We love you so much. Good night. If you need prayer, prayer teams, I'd love to invite you down. If you've come in and need prayer for anything at all, we would love to pray for you. So you're welcome to come down to the altar. Hey everyone, Michael and Jess here. We are standing on the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. The local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that. We believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we want to invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is going to do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing, and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're going to show you right now. We want to take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus' image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10, 42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into children's church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. 
Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for His presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious, with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary, depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first-year students, as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week, and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. And may millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space on the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named the Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May He be adored and worshiped on this property. May His Word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May His gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find Him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and His gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.